All right, everybody, welcome back once again. Today we have Michael from Montreal. He's gonna be telling us all about his personal hair loss story and journey with uh, hair systems, which is gonna be really exciting. How you doing today, Michael? Yeah, I'm doing great, and you? Oh man, I'm so good. I'm excited for this conversation. I think it's gonna be uh, a lot of value for those that are listening at home. And I'm also excited because Michael will probably be joining us in future videos as we're talking about skincare as he is a skincare expert and works inside of the beauty space. So that's gonna be amazing uh, as an asset to this channel right here. Now, let's just dive right into it, man. I would love to hear your superhero origin story when it comes to hair loss. When did you start experiencing uh, some um, of your hair loss? I think I started having hair loss very early at 17. Mm. And the reason why is because when I was young, I had a lot of acne and I take a very strong medication for acne. What was it? Um, it was Accutane. Okay. I don't know if you ever hear about that, uh, but um, it was very strong and uh, the side effect, they, they told me that I can lose hair temporary. Mm. But the thing, I think I will lose my hair um, anyway, like maybe in my 30s. But because I take that medication, I think it just like uh, speed up the process. Mm. So at 17, I start losing my hair like more than usual. And unfortunately, it never, it never grow back. Even after like my treatment of Accutane, it never grew back as, uh, as before. Mm. So yes, it's caused me a lot of like anxiety and a lot of uh, self-esteem problem yeah i bet so <clears throat> now when you were taking accutane and the doctor told you this originally what was your thought did you think that you were going to experience it were you prepared for some hair loss i was prepared for some hair loss but at that point i was so desperate to get my skin fixed mm. that i was ready to do everything mm. so, so you, your skin was particularly bad at that point Yes, I have a, I have like a very like moderate to like, uh, I can say like very bad acne. Mm. So I was really, I, wa I was really willing to do everything to get rid of my acne. But at some point it works because now I don't have acne, but it caused another problem. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, you had great skin, but you lost your hair. Well, that's yeah, I have great skin now. I don't have like pimples anymore and everything. <laughs> Uh, problem solved, but <laughs> it caused another issue. Yeah, but yeah. Now I knew how to how to like fix it, but still, yeah, it was not the perfect solution. Yeah. So how did that feel? I mean, you know, you fixed your skin, right? And and obviously, skincare is very important to you. I, I wonder if that was the the start of where you know your skincare journey and and doing that professionally began. But uh, how did it feel? You fixed this one problem and another one pertaining to your appearance and a very visible one, right? Your hair popped up. Like, how did that feel? Oh my God, it was terrible because I was so happy that my acne finally cleared up. Mm -hmm. But when I realized that my hair was falling more than usual, and when I realized that nothing grew, grew back as usual, I was feeling terrible because I was so happy that I fixed something. But at, at the same time, I was so sad that I, I lose, I, I, I lose my, um, my hair. So for me, it was uh, quite traumatizing, I can say. I bet. How much, uh, how much hair loss do you think that you had around that time period? You say it, it didn't grow back the same. Was it so thin that, you know, on the Norwood scale, you know, like your hairline was receding? Was it diffuse thinning? Like what type of hair loss were you having? Uh, it was really like hairline. It was really like mm -hmm. on the on the side here. Um, yes, it because I work in that industry for like so long, for me, it was not an option to uh, start losing hair. So for some people, I think it will be ac acceptable to have like maybe like more like tining hair like at the at the front. But for me, because of my of my work in that industry, um, I just wanted my full hair back. Yeah. There was no other solution. I wanted my full hair back, like no matter what. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, at what age did you make this decision? I mean, you started to to lose your hair. You had solved your acne problem. Um, what age are we at this time uh, that you decided to take some action with your hair loss? It was, a, I would say, like nineteen eighteen. 
Okay, still very young. Very um, young. So very young. I start, I have my, my, my first uh, airpiece. But I have to say that before that, um, I was looking to get like a hair transplant. Mm -hmm. And at that moment, we go back like 20 years ago. Um, at, at that moment, uh, hair transplant was not as good as now. Mm -hmm. So I see a lot of professional and they like, and they told me like, you are young, try to use product to regrow your hair and everything. But even if I use those product, I will never get the same hair back. It will be better, but I don't want better. I wanted like perfection. I wanted like the same volume. I wanted like, so, and even with the hair transplant, it would be like, um, uh, it will cost a lot of money at that time. I didn't have mm -hmm. like that money also. And the result, they all told me that um, I will need to do it one, two times, three times, because yes, I'm going to fix it like at that specific moment, but I will need to come back in the future because my hair going to still like falling at some point. Yeah. And that's something that people, I think, in their search uh, for the solution that's right for them, they need to consider. Uh, I I think that a lot of these centers, transplant centers, are not as honest as uh, your doctor was with you about it. That one, if you are early in life, like if you're not 50 or 60 and you need one you know, transplant surgery, if you're younger and you're losing hair, you're probably gonna continue losing hair, right? Mm -hmm. And where even if you have a surgery restores you back to 100%, you're still probably going to have to go back at some other point. So, you know, looking at the cost analysis of it is it's already expensive, but the potential for you to go back and have to have another is very, very high, probably. Um, not yes. saying that it's not a good option and not saying that people shouldn't do it, but it's something that they need to factor in to their decision. Yes, of course, I totally agree. Um, on, the long, on the long run, it's going to be like also very, very, very expensive for a lot of people. Yeah, but you know, every every uh, option has its expense. And you know, for those of us that decide we want to do something about our hair, right? Like we we take that expense on and it's, it's something that matters to us. So, um, you know, 20 years ago, you said that you decided to uh, engage in wearing a hair system. Uh, what was the world back like then? I mean, uh, what was the public opinion? Like, did you share it with anybody? What was the technology like? You know, let's start with one question. So did you share that you were starting to wear a hair system with anybody? Or was this something that you you hid and didn't tell anyone? Um, I was lucky because at that same moment, I decided to move to Montreal. Mm -hmm. I wasn't trois I was not in, in the big city yet. So for me, it was quite easy because I do the, uh, I have my first air system at the same moment that I move. So when I start a new work, when I met new people in that new city, people didn't know that I didn't have air before. Mm -hmm. So that was easy for me, but for my, the person around me, my family and everything, they were just like supportive. Like if, if it makes me feel good, they were happy with that. Yeah, that's great. That's great. And that, that is a, an amazing transition makes it very easy if you're moving to a new city and you're you're not yeah. interacting with a lot of the same people. Um, when I first got uh, my system, I was living in Florida and okay. I actually I, I was pretty open about it with people. And I told I told those I asked or that noticed most people didn't, though, um, people even that I went to the, the same gym with uh, pretty much on a day-to-day -day basis. Most of them, like, did you get a new haircut? I was like, yeah. <laughs> uh, but I've moved to to Utah now and I haven't told anybody, but that's not because I'm, I'm afraid or that I don't want to tell them. It's just, it's a lot of people don't know and they don't recognize it. You know, the, the technology is, is pretty impressive, which brings me to my next question. Uh, so 20 years ago, different technology inside of, of this world. You know, uh, how, how was the quality of the the products that you were using back then? Um, I will say that the hair system that I, that I got the first one, um, it was very different because um, it was not even glue, it was mm -hmm. clips. Oh, okay. 
So yeah. my first one was clips. And because I had like a, a couple of hair on my um, on my forehead still, I was able to clip even like the, the lace. But the lace, oh, nice. I didn't have like a, um, a translucent lace mm -hmm. uh, because my hair were like kind of more like uh, on my forehead. So um, yeah, it was just clips uh, and no glue. Um, it was looking okay, but the good thing about getting your hair system when you're young is because people don't, it's hard for people to imagine that at 20, you have a hair system. Mm -hmm. If I was 40 and I get the hair system, I feel people will have more doubt a little mm -hmm. bit, but because mm -hmm. I was so young and it's so unusual to see someone like that young with their hair system, uh, I think it went under the radar. Oh, hundred percent. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's not mainstream knowledge into, you know, the mind sees what we, we kind of want to see. Um, and what we expect to see is, is the main thing, you know, our brains are pattern recognizing devices. So we think we see a young guy, you know, had full head of hair, gray hair. Well, he's just lucky to have gray hair. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and we just accept it as it is. And that also, I would, I would argue, for the most part goes with um, really any age that you are and you have relatively close to the appropriate um, you know hair color density wave uh, that that you should naturally people will assume that it is actually your natural hair because that's what our brain expects that's what people expect and, and they don't pay that much attention to it. Um, in all of your 20 years, have you ever experienced someone uh, out of the blue asking you? Yes, yes, <laughs> not, not often, um, but actually when I was working like maybe like 10, 10 or 15 years ago with, um, mm -hmm. Uh, I have a coworker that just like at some point, uh, I think it was the light when like we're working and I just like bend over because I dropped something and like, mm. I think she saw something on my hair and she just asked me like the question, like she asked me, it was very funny because at the beginning she asked me, do you have hair extension? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I, because she, she kind of saw something, but she was not sure. And yes, yes, it's happened like sometime, um, it's maybe three or four times in 20 years. Mm -hmm. uh, and on the other side, I have, I, I, w I went with like people and, and, and partner that they never knew it was not my hair. Yeah. Yeah. So what I would also ask, uh, is those four or however many people that have, that have noticed it, were they beauty professionals as well? Yes. Okay. Yes, so that, all, that definitely skews it. Yeah, these are people that are attentively yeah. looking and probably trained to analyze and understand what they're seeing. Have you ever had an average person? Not as far as, as I remember, no. Yeah. I, yeah. I don't think like someone that was out of the beauty industry never ever asked me about, about that, no. Yeah, and I just wanted to clarify that because whether or not people um, have asked you that question before and you know recognize it, I think it's important to to clarify for those watching that you know a, a beauty professional, a style, a hairstylist, you know someone that's used to looking and thinking about these things. Yeah, maybe it's not going to train that, but that's completely different than the untrained eye. Think about the work that you do. How many of us? would recognize the intricacies of the specific thing that you do. We would just, we take things at face value, um, which, you know, it, just an interesting tidbit. So, so you've been doing this for 20 years now. Um, would you say that it's been a pretty good experience? Have you been happy with your experience? Oh, uh, for sure. Um, I cannot see myself without that now, of course, like I will never like, um, I will 100% like prefer having a hair system than not having hair. This, it's not even a question for me. Uh, for sure, like there's some moment that um, I need to learn by, by myself because I don't have anybody um, to show me how and things like that and how to take care of your hair system. So I, I learn a lot like alone, but um, definitely um, 
it's a part of me now. Yeah, yeah, I understand that. And that's, that's great. So it's part of you. Uh, how, what would you say it's done for, you know, your confidence, your personality? Do you, do you feel like it's augmented that in any way? Oh yeah, definitely, for sure. Like as soon as I get my, my first air system, um, I feel like everything was better. Mm-hmm. My job opportunity, um, my social life, um, everything was just better. Definitely, I have no doubt because I really feel that when you look your your best, you're gonna act your best also, and people are gonna gonna appreciate that. And yeah, yeah, you're gonna have like more a better self esteem, and people are gonna just uh, see that energy. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Do you see uh so you work inside the beauty space? Have you ever come across somebody else randomly that uh that you've noticed or or you've engaged with that also wears a, a hair system? Have you come across this? Yes, but someone who was in the in, in the beauty industry, yes, it's happened in the past. Uh and we kind of like talk about that. And I was not sure. So I was not sure how to talk about that to him, and he was not sure uh, how to <laughs> To talk to me ab- ab- about that too so we're kind of like not sure about each other but at some point like i said like oh you have nice hair and like we talk keep talking about hair and finally like he told me and i said me too and yes yeah it's happened in the past and uh, also now with like instagram and everything like it's happening that sometime uh, um i go to profile of people and i'm like and as i talk about them i'm like okay um you may have a hair system because i have one too yeah. And like the like discussion and we talk about it yeah yeah i love that because you know when when uh when you talk about it or i talk about it and we we tell people our story right it if they they have a system and you know they try to keep it quiet or they're a little bit shy about it you know we we live we give them a lot of inspiration to to really embrace it and it's it's liberating to be able to talk to someone about it um so i think that's really powerful and and also you know you coming on here and sharing your particular story is very empowering for many many men um there's there's so many people that that email and comment and they they just say how much these do for them to see that normal men like you or i going about our various and different lives and still trying to look better and feel better about ourselves and do the things that we we want and need to do um I, it, it really liberates them to to feel like they they can actually make that decision themselves so i do want to thank you for um for coming on for talking about your experience and and just being that way in uh in your life that's that's really inspiring thank you and i wish that at some point like 20 years ago i have like youtube and like a place <laughs> that i can like learn and like um yes it's great and uh, one thing that I think it's important to to say also about the relationship. Um, at the beginning, it was a big thing for me when you start uh, meeting someone new, because at some point they will realize they will put their hand in your hair and they will maybe touch something. And at the beginning, I was super like uncomfortable with that. I tried to hide and everything, but in the last 10 years, I will say, or, or five years even, um, it's like the first thing I said almost. Mm-hmm. I prefer to just like say it first. So if anything happened, I'm not stressed. I'm not going to think about it even. And I never, never had a bad reaction. That's awesome. That's awesome. That's really cool to hear. And, uh, and I agree with you. I think, you know, worst case scenario, someone doesn't like it or they think it's strange, but, you know, you really haven't lost somebody valuable uh, in your life, if they're judging you or don't want to be around you because of a single decision like that to improve yourself. Um, and that can be a tough pill to swallow for some people, but it's, it's honestly a very truthful one. And, uh, and at the end of the day, you want people, at least I want people in my life that, 
uh, I know are going to support me to make decisions for my best that are going to support me when I'm trying to do something to better my life. And anybody that doesn't fall into that category, they can they can leave. <laughs> you know, uh, life is short, and and anybody that's detracting from our life and us trying to be better. It's not worth it, worth it to to hide or be somebody else or or live a smaller life for them. Yeah. But I'm. Test, I will say it's a good test for a first date. <laughs> I, yeah. Hey. By the way, <laughs> uh, it's a great test. Well, thank you so much for coming on, Michael, and uh, you will be seen more on this channel as we're talking about skincare. Uh, you are a skincare expert, so. Uh, I, I'm not pretending to be a skincare expert as we talk about skincare on this channel, but instead I'm going to be learning along with everybody and sharing what I know. So I'm excited to have you along for the journey, sharing some of that expertise and, and helping us along the way as we, we help men really embrace this and start taking care of themselves inside and out. So thank you so much for coming on. And thank you to everybody who has watched this video. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe as it helps the YouTube algorithm push this out to more people. We will see you all soon.